Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into another episode of Talking Shop. On today's episode, we have my very good friend, Jack Settleman from Snapback Sports. We talked everything from Snapchat to everything sports cards, who we're investing in, what you should invest in, uh, or what you should look into, what you should know before getting into the industry, some of our best cards, what we're staying away from, what we're going towards, how different things are going to be affecting the market. We had a really, really good time. Uh, on today's episode, so I know you're going to enjoy it. Uh, if you do, I grew up such a fan of sports memorabilia and sports cards, and I'm really excited that this show is both going to highlight that as well as the awesome entrepreneurs that make it all possible. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back into another episode of Talking Shop. Today we have a very special and distinguished guest, Jack Settleman. Uh, welcome into the show. What's up, Buster? How's it going? It's going good. So first thing first, I know a little bit uh, about your story and about Snapback Sports, but what what is your definition of it? What is your explanation of how it began? Why do you do what you do? Great question. Well, it was originally Real Sports, and I made that name because I wanted to capture real live sports, and I didn't think about that whole HBO situation and a little lawsuit that would come from them. So we changed it to Snapback Sports after about a year but it started in college my senior year three hours from houston three hours from dallas hour and a half from san antonio had access to texas football texas basketball where i was at school and i was like i need to just be putting content out there because i have a lot of access and everyone's on instagram there was this big page hoops nation they were kind of running the show and i was like why not go to snapchat so for about a year it was just all a snapchat highlight page and then when i went to games doing live experiences. But since then, over the past nine months, we started the podcast, we started to do more Instagram TV content, YouTube, et cetera, and making it more into a wholesome brand. That's awesome. Why Snapchat? Because it's very rare. I remember when we first met we yeah. talked about this, and I am just blown away by that, but Snapchat. Snapchat is not the greatest thing in the world for creators. So it really, but I didn't know that at the time. All I knew was Twitter, and this was three and a half, three years ago. So Twitter was actually pretty heavy, like people were on yeah. Twitter. And then Instagram was super crowded, and it's only gotten more crowded since. Yeah. I didn't feel like, I felt like I could build to 100,000 followers. But you guys, you, Elliot, the top pages who had already eclipsed multiple hundreds of thousands you couldn't grow like that on instagram anymore unless you're creating like fully original content yeah. i was in college i didn't have time to do that so i figured why not go to snap snaps engaging and it is the most engaging platform but it's not built perfectly for what i do so i kind of have to spend extra time answering people one-on-one -on -one versus a comment section where if someone says no i pick lebron and i'm you know doing a hypothetical i have to answer 100 people if you do that and you post a graphic and you answer the first one, no one else expects an answer on that because you already answered that question. So it takes a little more work, but for the swipe up feature, like that's where people don't understand. Snapchat swipe up is probably the most powerful out of all the platforms. Super interesting too. And one of the things that I've noticed even on like the much smaller Hoops Nation Snapchat is people send things to groups. Exactly. Exactly. It's a great, I mean, and Instagram integrated that. So that's been like, we've seen it go from tag a friend, right. in in different posts to send to your group chat, because I don't tag people anymore. I DM it to my group of friends on Instagram. Snaps had that since, you know, day one. Yeah, no, it's true. They were definitely, I mean, as you know, Instagram just took all their features. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it is, it's all, it's all good fun. Yeah. Um, now where, where do you kind of want to take that now? Uh, developing the brand into, I mean, this is my thing. I'm 23. I get to go, well, when we're not in quarantine, I get to go to sporting events and post about it. And that's my job outside of obviously working for whistle, but like, that's all I really want to do right now is if I could make $10 million tomorrow, what would I do? I would probably go to the Super Bowl. And I got to do that as a fan. So, you right. know, like, like people always say, okay, I'm going to work till I'm 45 and then I can retire with millions of dollars. And I'll be like, all right, so what would you do? Well, I would, you know, go to Knicks games and I would, you know, go like visit Miami. I'm like, all right, well, I went to a Knicks game and I'm going to Miami for the Super Bowl. So right now it's just how can I continue to make money doing what I'm doing? 
and just build the brand. We're both living in retirement. Exactly. Exactly. Um, now, <laughs> how how did you first? What was your first interaction with sports cards and memorabilia? Oof. I mean, take it back. Like this is why the sports cards industry is so great. Is because it's all just reminiscing. It's when you first open those cards, you bought them from Target. Your mom, like, we're in line for Target. Mom gets all the groceries or all the. Uh, eight dollar sandals and t-shirts and then you see the cards over there and you try and sneak it onto the conveyor belt <laughs> like that's yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. first experience yeah. is trying to do that and then like you just haven't had that because everything went digital now people are doing fifa pack openings online 2k madden ultimate team all that stuff so i mean i've just seen your content out there i've seen gary's content out there and i was like I agree. I think this is just a revolution that's going to come back because it just touches the heart for so many people. And I think too, it's like, it's become as the industry has gotten so much bigger and so many more, more people have gotten into it. There's, there's, you know, launched this whole investing aspect of it where before there was only a couple cards here and there. Like if like you could always invest in a Michael Jordan Fleer rookie card, right? But now you can invest in a rookie who hasn't stepped on the court yeah it's wild it's wild and i think what we're gonna see in the industry is like personal collections are gonna become even bigger and that's gonna make a ton of cards more valuable because right now yes it's gone from mj as the only card to now you have Giannis, mj lebron but like you know there's other cards that should be kevin durant should be valuable but he's like more really, valuable than he is. he's really not a valuable card but if you have diehard KD fans who get into it and then the best KD cards, they gain value. So I think that's what's cool is it feels like a lot of people are getting in right now, but we have a whole, I mean, we got a lot of time. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. And I, I think too, it's also super interesting to see how like over the course of time, each different brand has come into play and how each different player signs a different amount. So like, for example, the top two guys, like Kobe was the number one Panini guy. Right. Like he did more than anybody. In 2012, I don't know if you remember, I think it was 2012, there was a, in any hobby box that you bought, there was a Kobe pack. <laughs> you got a pack of only Kobe cards. Right. So it's real, it's real fun to just like watch the, how it progresses over time. First starting, you know, back with Fleer and then, Tops came onto the scene, and then Upper Deck came onto the scene, and now it's Panini. But it, I, I just find it all so much fun. Well, the question is, is like now that we feel like so many people are going to get into the industry, into the market, are they now going to overprint cards, and then everything from this day forward, next year's draft class, the one after that, there's just going to be a surplus like there was in the '90s. It's yeah. just a very intriguing time to be in. It's a difficult thing too, because even you look at like one of the hottest cards right now, the Prism Silver, you look back at the Giannis Prism Silver. So 2013, 14, I think I have a Giannis base rookies here somewhere. I'll show in a second, but um, you look back at those and you look at the PSA site, there are only a couple thousand right. uh, PSA tens of those. Now you look at the Zion Prism Silver and you've like 30,000 plus PSA tens in the world. It's so it's like, wild. and it's not obviously not numbered, so they can do what they want. Right. It's, so I mean, it's a very interesting, as someone who's like just learning about all this, because I'll admit, like I'm pretty much brand new to the investing and understanding the value. It's just very interesting to see because as much as it should make sense, it doesn't. Because mm -hmm. like Zion has played like 30 games in the league and he could be a superstar, but like there's people, LeBron James's cards, they should be going for a hundred. He has three titles already. He is the second or the greatest player of all time. And he's like percentage wise, not that far ahead of Zion when in reality, and there's so many more of his cards now. I don't know. It's right. It's so crazy, which but, you know, is a but, great reason to invest. But what makes it nuttier is like, it's more about what the market will pay. Like it doesn't have to make sense in terms of, okay, there's a hundred of these cards. There's 10 of these cards. These should be 10 times more valuable. It, it doesn't matter. It's what the market cares about. And that's what makes it very cool. And honestly, very tough to predict. True. Also like a lot of the kids are getting into it now for the first time. And it's like, yeah. Oh, I have to invest in Zion. 
So they all invest in Zion. Right. And Zion goes from a $300 PSA 10 base prism rookie to a $700, $800 PSA 10. So that that's super interesting. But also know of people who will just deplete the market so that they can control what the value is. So right. they'll buy out every, you know, blue prism rookie card to two ninety nine. every red prism mm -hmm. buy them all um so that they then inevitably control the market when the player gets better it's amazing it's amazing yeah. so what 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 are some of the thing what are some of the cards that you like right now so my favorite well i was high on jaron jackson i know you just had him on the podcast and then i was doing some uh deep dives last night on his game because I think what happens is, like, we watch a lot of basketball, but we also yeah. watch a lot of Twitter clips and a lot of memes. And that actually a shapes, lot. right? Like, how many full games of Jaron Jackson Jr. have you actually watched? Like, yeah. not right, not that many. So I had to uh, look into some tape. I don't love his jump shot. It's so awkward. It goes in. It goes in. So I was high on Jaron Jackson Jr. I think RJ has value. Because just in comparison, like, look at where Zion and Ja went. They're obviously light years ahead of RJ. But RJ's in New York. And if RJ Barrett takes that step in year two, like, look at him as, like, a Brandon Ingram player. If he starts taking steps in New York, he's going to catch fire. So True. But you don't want him to turn into this guy. Exactly. You don't <laughs> want him to turn into that guy. So, I mean, it's, it's just so unpredictable. But in terms of NBA, I like Jaron Jackson Jr. I'm actually staying away from Zion and Ja. I think their prices are just, like, too astronomical right now. I would like to see uh, what happens in year two for them. Even if they continue to play well, I think they sit still. It's not until one of them becomes a true MVP candidate or one of them goes deep in the playoffs that I think we see the next big uptick. I've also yeah. stayed away from Luka. I'm, I'm Giannis. I think like Giannis could go down as a top five player of all time. He's international right now. He doesn't have a, he has two things going for him in terms of why his value could go up. He doesn't have the ring yet. And I think he wins a ring probably multiple and he's stuck in Milwaukee. If Giannis comes to the Knicks and wins a title, that will be probably the most expensive. If he goes to the Lakers and wins a title, if he goes to the Warriors and wins a title, mm -hmm. the, like his value will just, it'll hyper because People don't understand how important the market is. Like New Yorkers will pay 10x what someone in Wisconsin Green Bay is paying for a Giannis rookie card. It's true because the Knicks have nobody. Right. <laughs> and you sound like me saying that, bro. I, I've, I've shied away from making any bold Knicks free agent predictions since I double I, lost that last I'm year. I'm not saying Giannis is coming. I'm saying <laughs> he doesn't have the title. He's in a small market and he's international. But yeah. I believe he could truly be a top five, top ten player of all time. He's that good. And he hasn't had a jumper. He's like 25, 26. He's going to win back-to-back -back MVPs if the NBA season resumes. Like, this is a guy that I think is undervalued. No, I definitely think there is a great point to what they have already done. Right. I think that that's big, too. Like, Steph Curry right. isn't going up. Right. And, and you talk about the kids that are going to come into the market. They're blowing up Ja and Zion. But the kids, they love Stephen Curry. And is it like, does he need two more rings and finals MVPs? Or is it just like he's kind of capped? It feels I mean, like he's capped. what more can he do? He was the right. first unanimous MVP in NBA history right. and, and won a bunch of titles. And he's so beloved by everyone, which is why yeah, it's weird right. to not see him be like that high up. I don't know. That's why I think it's so funny how the market really just values people. Yeah, no, I think it's super interesting. My strategy has always been pick players. First, you got to pick somebody whose game you like, right. number one. Right. And then second, I pick someone who has some uh, value in the market just so that I see that there's some interest. Never a ton of interest. Never right. never the Jaws, never you know, any of these guys. I also usually pick people with decent players around them. So like mm -hmm. not the worst team ever because yeah. then they end up like a Devin Booker and it's yeah. like, yeah, he's the best. Like, yeah, he's great. But right. you know, so that's how I've, I've so come. Who are, you, who are your guys? Jaron's up there. I'm just yeah. looking at some of the guys I'm looking at now. Um, Jaron's there. I went Trey pretty early. Okay, um, nice. I had some Trey, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, um i think once once they the next, once yeah. they make some noise he's pretty cheap in comparison yeah. 
I like Tyler Hero a lot. Um, I'm not a big Hero guy. And really? I, in, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's – people love him, so you have that aspect, which is so important. And you have Kentucky, which is big. Like, I think college actually makes a difference. Like, having Duke for Zion actually does make a difference. Yeah. Um, but I don't love Hero as a player. That's just like a personal thing. I keep getting into a few breaks and pack openings. And I keep ending up with the rookies on the Cavs. So like Garland, Porter Jr. And um, the rookies on the Hornets, which are like <laughs> the worst two teams to have. And I'm not a are massive those fan. Breaks? Huh? Those are random teams? Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, like random or I open a box myself. So Big P.J. Washington fan, apparently. Big Garland. <laughs> big Kevin Porter Jr. I'm not a huge fan, but they're quality cards to have for now. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm also obviously some of the older guys, so LeBron. Yeah. I'm trying to I, – I think uh, our guest on the last episode, he said that second-year LeBrons are going to be the next. Why is that? It's just super cheap. Yeah. So, like – I mean, look at the – let's talk about what's happening literally today. Michael Jordan and the doc and what is his cards going to be worth? I mean, you've already seen base, like Steve Kerr cards, double in price. <laughs> there was a base base, uh, Fleer metal universe went from 75 to 2000 last week. Right. Like it's because of the doc. It's because people getting in, they just want to buy what's hot. Like, where do you think the reason? Is? I think it's a combination of people know, like the smart people knowing early that, they can do whatever they want because everything MJ is going to go up. Right. And then it's people, and then it's the second wave of people trying to catch on. Right. Only escalates it further. And then it's. Whoever. And then it's the third wave who comes in and they're like, Oh, this is the price. And they don't check what it was two weeks ago because it's the new price. Yeah. It's crazy. But I think like a lot of, I'm curious. Here's what I'm curious about how, because MJ says people are going to think that he's, he's yeah. not a guy after the doc comes out. Um, I'm curious, does that mean that people are gonna think that the Scotty Pippins and Rodmans are great guys? Or is everybody a bad guy? And also does being a bad guy necessarily even touch the value of Michael Jordan in the card memorabilia world? Or do people like the bad guy? It's an incredible question. My question to you would be, all right, all those people, the the really smart, the investors who knew at 75 bucks that it would go up, they probably couldn't predict two gram, but they yeah. knew it would go up. Are they selling today, even before the doc? Are they selling on Monday at its peak? Or you think they're actually holding those cards and those are like somewhat of the new values? I think a lot of them are going to sell. Yeah. I think we have a market crash on Monday. For Jordan. What's interesting, though, about the Jordan market crash is, like, we're only going to see one or two episodes, right? So there's yeah, actually yeah. more to see. But I think once the first one, like, once the cat's out of the bag, it's, it's over. Yeah, because I think a lot of it, too, is also, it's not even necessarily the doc, but it's what the doc did, putting Jordan in the press, putting Jordan in our eyes, putting yeah. Jordan in every Instagram, every Snapchat, every Facebook, yeah. every podcast, everybody. <laughs> On this yeah. show, we're talking about Michael Jordan, you know? Right. I think that's what it does too. Um, but I think it'll be interesting. Another guy I'm really hype on, uh, two guys actually. One I'm just starting to test the water for. I haven't I haven't committed yet, but I've committed to his brother, Lonzo Ball. Really? I really like his work ethic. You like Lamelo or Lonzo? Lonzo's. Lonzo. I like Lonzo. Lon I that's another player who high pick has the family, has, like, he's kind of stuck in New Orleans, but he's also stuck in New Orleans with Zion, so there's going to be media coverage, and, and he's, he's shown a lot of improvement. To me, think of any valuable card, though. I love him, but think of any valuable card who scores under 20 points per game. That's the key. It's like, can Zion actually go 20 and 10 in games, or is he just going to be a 14, 10, and 6 guy his whole career? <laughs> My main concern with Zion is he's a very explosive big player. Yeah. 82 times 20? I don't it's, know about that. Yeah. It's, uh, 82 it's, times 10? Maybe. I don't think his game, like in college, he wasn't able to do it. And what is, how many games? RJ are, outscored him in college. <laughs> right, that too. So I think that's interesting. But um, I, I think you can never go wrong with – 
I, here's what I believe as far as investing and part of it's also collecting because I just like some of the guys and I do like PC some stuff mm-hmm. that I probably won't ever sell. Yeah. But, um, but I think going with legends is always great. Just make sure you get the right card. And one of the things that I learned actually from our last guest as well, and he kind of pre- predicted beforehand the metal universe craze, but take somebody's most valuable card, right? And then just go down the line. So if Jordan's most valuable card is his precious metal gem green to five, go down one step. All right, it's to 10. Go down another step. All right, it's to 100. Down 200, 300, 400. And then you eventually make your way down to like inserts. And then you make your way down to the base. That's a great card to invest in because it is in the sequence of his most valuable card. That's a good point. I think that's a super smart way, if you know nothing, to invest in a legend. Got it. Okay. What about on the flip side? And this is something that I've actually never heard anyone talk about, so I want to get your input. This upcoming draft class, it's said to be one of the worst classes ever, but it's also going to coincide with the, the heat of the market, the craze of sports cards. Like, I think this is our first big – Like people are reverse buying John and Zion because they were a little late. But this next coming draft class, like there's going to be new, brand new buyers in the market, me included. And there's not like a consensus who the best player is or who the most hyped player is. Like what are you going to do? I think a lot of people are going to get burned because what's going to happen is all the first products are the college products. Yep. So people are going to buy the LaMelo ball, Australian card for the value of what a normal prism would be. And a lot of people are gonna get burned. Like I bought even myself, like I I think this is the only thing that I did it this year, and I'm not too mad at it, but speaking of Tyler, mm-hmm. I got this Oh Kentucky. nice. Um, but Kentucky's a different animal because that's, that's what I'm thinking. Right. But I feel like the equivalent of that for like a even I love Ja, but like, you know, Ja, he didn't go to Kentucky. He didn't exactly. go to definitely not UNC. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are going to get burned on that front. But, um, but I think like the reason I mentioned Lonzo and his brother, I'm looking back. There are some LaMelo cards in the market right now, signs. Uh-huh. Um, but I just don't trust the brands that they were done with because it was done with like Leaf and I don't. Right, right. All right, so who, if you could own one, you know, rookie auto of this year's draft class, who would you want it to be when the okay. good cards are out? Oh, of this upcoming class? Yeah. Oh, LaMelo. Yeah, by far, right? Not even who's, who's the number two then? That's, that's the question, right? You have Zion, but who's the jaw? Well, we didn't even know jaw was going to be the jaw until two weeks before the draft. Exactly, exactly. No, that's a great question. And then who the market decides is the two. Right. Was, wasn't RJ selling for more than Ja when the cards first dropped? I'm sure he was in New York and no one thought anything of Memphis. People thought RJ was going to be an all-star. <laughs> I think that was your narrative that was probably that was definitely my narrative. <laughs> Here, I'm, I'm investing big. I want to see some of your cards as well, but I'll show you some of the. I I went pretty deep into Jaren. These are just some of good. No, 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 I'm I'm a big Jaren fan. Like people say, like people I trust. That's another thing that I think is important for everyone listening or watching. Is yeah. like we don't know like actual basketball and how like we're not the smartest basketball people in the world of analyzing 100%. the game. So I have people I trust, and they're like. Jaron Jackson, like, Jaw's cool and all. He tries to dunk on people. He's rookie of the year. He's awesome. Jaron Jackson's better at basketball and will be a better player than John Moran. And that's from people I trust. So I take that with a grain of salt of, like, I love Ja, but maybe Triple J is the answer. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you a little bit of the Jarens that I've been going at. Ooh, that's nice. This is the 75. So you said you always buy graded. Yeah. What is your strategy? Always, but, you, but right, normally. Like, what's like that. your strategy with like you know you got a PSA ten or a bag at nine point five? Oh, uh, PSA ten over nine five, um, yeah. but they value pretty much the same. Yeah. 
Um, here's the blue. Nice. Which is one ninety nine. I got two reds. Nice. And these and are. Where are you picking most of this stuff up? Off of eBay. eBay. Yeah, I buy on eBay. Some more Jarens. I have a whole stack of of those here. I'll pull some. This is honestly one of my favorite. I like Optic a lot. So yeah. This, the twenty five version. I like Optic too, and everyone keeps telling me Prism, Prism, Prism. I don't know. I think the optics are clean. You know that, the, uh, that, the is that the flawless? Rookie. Yeah. Is that rookie or nine or nineteen? Rookie. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. I like. I've always loved these cards, but for some reason they're real cheap on the market. What card is that? This is the immaculate rookie to twenty five? Oh, that's cool. Hatch. That looks really like, clean, and the pink's nice. It's so clean, but they're selling for like I got this for like one twenty. Is that like what you think you could get into in the future? Is taking advantage of cards that look cool and look nice? Uh, no, because you will get burned that way because yeah. all cards are going to end up looking cool. That's fair. Um, this is one here. This, these are two. I'm going to show you two cards that I'll never sell. Um, this was one of my first nice cards. Tobias Harris, one of my favorite players growing That's up. That's sick. And this. That's a sick patch. And this one, I've had it on my desk out here for a hot minute. This dark patch. Wow. So I, I don't think I'm getting rid of that one. I got like a little stand for it and whatnot. But, but yeah, I honestly, here's an example of a card that I might have bought too late. I picked this up last week. Okay. It was going, this is in PSA 8. And it's so a Pippin? It's a Pippin rookie. Nice. Um, I might have bought it late. They were selling for forty dollars in January. I bought it for two hundred. <laughs> What's it at right now? You you it's at two forty, two thirty. I mean, but that's not after fees and stuff, you'll probably break even, but you know, there's worse things. What unless, about the person who bought it? Unless the market crashes on Monday. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. But that's why I went, I see the Pippin love, I see the Robin love, but I went MJ just because, like, even if it crashes Monday, give it 10 more years and that, you know, he's going up. Over It'll time. hold. My hope with Scotty is that the doc just makes people more aware of how involved he was because right. he did not get any love. So, like, yeah. just the fact that a rookie of his – PSA 8 could be selling for $30. Right. Everyone who played in that era and who talks about him says he's, like, easily top 50 player of all time. He has six titles. Like, it's absurd. Crazy. Um, Want to show me some of the stuff you're, you're yeah. rocking? This is, I mean, I got the Giannis Beckett 10, Ooh. which I was hype about. Bro. Did you get it graded or you bought it? No, I bought this. I bought this straight up. That's um, I wanted, someone said Beckett over PSA 10. 10, hundred percent. Exactly. So the only 9.5 is the centering, which is always so funny. Cause like they got to get picky, but bro, if that was a black label. Exactly. That's crazy. So oh. this, this is the number one card. This is the card that I'm going to hold for the next Jeez. 12 years. I, it's yeah. iconic. It's like, it's PSA yeah. eight. It's PSA 8. I think I probably bought it a little late. I thought so. And then a week later, it's cost even more. So that one I knew I'm holding for years to come. And then, like you said, I think what's the coolest part of the industry is, like, I have Derek White, CJ McCollum, and Miles Turner. I'll never sell these because they came on the podcast. And I'll create a little collection of people who come that's on the podcast. Awesome. Right? Like, that, that's what you want to do. I, I bought it. these reluctantly. Because ungraded Zion and Ja, because I just want to, I like to hold them, have them. Yeah. You know, there's no no harm in that. And then, you know, my guy. Do you do any football collecting? I don't, but I'm familiar. So Lamar, he's my favorite player. He's awesome. I mean, that's that's my dude. So the funny thing is, if I had been in cards, I swear to God, if I had been in cards like two years ago. I would have owned every Lamar Jackson card because like I, I said from the start, like Lamar, he's the guy, he's going to be a superstar, whatever. And I would have been buying his stuff pennies on a dollar. He wins MVP and now he's half of Mahomes. So that's the, that's the, you know, 
Woo. That's the industry in itself. Yeah, I know. Bro, you want to hear you want to hear like a nightmare story real quick? Yeah. That that's what gets people in is like the massive hits, the breaks and then the nightmare stories. We all have them. You know, I was collecting Giannis right. in 2014, dumped them all. That's a nightmare. Why would you dump them? I traded. I was big on like trading in like 2015. Right. I remember I traded uh, Giannis rookie auto oh. on card for some Kyrie rookie. <laughs> but like, and you I know. thought at the time I was like, oh, I, I robbed this guy. Right. And Kyrie, he hits the shot. Like he, Ky- you could almost argue Kyrie is a more established career than Giannis. More accomplished. MVP, but Kyrie is the biggest shot in Cleveland history. Yeah, no, it's true. Champion. I do still have, I do still have uh, ungraded, but I do have one. Nice, nice. Got it for five (laughs) dollars. What's he going for now, ungraded? Mm, It's not a, not insane, but a couple hundred, I think. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man, those. I'm trying to think of what other good nightmare stories I have. But I had, like, multiple Giannis rookie autos. I probably bought for 20, 30 bucks that oh. now, I guess, are, like, two to $3,000 cards. Just traded them for a card that I don't even have anymore, and it's probably worth 50 bucks. All right, so <laughs> the question is, you, you see a guy like that. Like, you liked Giannis, right? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out, all right, I think RJ is good. I think, you know, he, whatever. Let's say he does become a superstar, and that's my mindset. How do you go about getting a collection of RJ cards? Are you going to go buy online a little above market, pay the fee, pay the tax, you know, pay for RJ graded silvers? Or are you going to try to buy a lot of ungraded rookie? Like, what do you do in that case? That's a great question. Right now, I'm personally – probably trying to like spot out who has good collections on social media of RJ and seeing if they're able to move them. If I have a collection, maybe I'll trade. Um, If I don't, maybe I'll I'll try to buy in a lot because you're always better off trying to buy multiple to get Mm. like deals. And if you can avoid the extra taxes and and all that, obviously right now is a very odd time because you can't even send things into grade and there are no shows, but um, shows would be a great place to show up with cash and exit with a little mini RJ. Personal Have you been price. to the national? I haven't. That's one. Where are you going to go? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, this is going to be so fun whenever it does happen. Um, yeah. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> I think that that was supposed to be two, like two months from now. Oh man. Yeah. It sounds like very dangerous though. Like you just show up with, not in terms of like safety, in terms of like you show up with cash and you see stuff and you're just like, I want that. I want that. I want that. That's what happened. Yeah. If they had credit card, if they accepted credit, people would be, people would be going broke so fast. But yeah, no, I, I think one day it would be fun. Um, yeah, maybe one day we'll set up a table at the National in three years. I'm down. That would be fire. I'm down. But, um, but yeah, I, I, at the end of the day, though, I think what is so fun about it all is that it is collecting and that it is like sports cards. But at the same time, like you're not losing all your money. <laughs> Right. That, well, that's what I've been trying to explain to my mom. She's like, put your money in the market, put your money here. I'm like, I get that there are, there's definitely risk involved, especially if I buy cases or boxes or packs or any of that stuff. But there has been an established market and how much these things cost. Like it's, it's very similar to holding a stock. Yeah, it is buying a share. Like a Giannis rookie card is buying the most expensive share of Giannis. Right. And now if you go BGS 10, then you're just, you're balling. There you go. There you go. <laughs> if you could have any card in the world, what would it be? Value aside, let's say you have to keep it forever. Uh, value aside, it would be, there's actually this, so it's funny you ask, because there's this Lamar Jackson card and the patch. Let me see. Let me see. I, I'll share the picture with Ben, but let me see if I can actually pull it up. The patch is like, I think I just deleted it off my phone. The patch is like the Raven bird. So it's a, like it's, it's the sickest patch. It's a white clean card. It's autoed. It's of five. 
and the guy wants to sell it for like four thousand dollars and i asked i have a bunch of people i trust like i said they're like one thousand two thousand max that's it that's what it's comp for like that's all it's worth but to me it's like if i'm gonna own a lamar card that's the absolute sickest card to own so right now it's probably that card what about you for me it would probably be i love booklets like booklet cards bro i opened a shitty booklet this morning but they are electric to touch <laughs> the best yeah. but i love the ones with like 10 different guys yeah, on. the treasure chests or whatever they're called nuts so there there's actually one that i'm looking at right now i'm not i'm not gonna bid on it but uh lebron finals worn jumbo patch booklet no way insane autoed or no not autoed how much is that so running yes and signed panini it goes surprisingly low the last one sold for 1500 wow ungraded obviously but sold for 1500 booklets graded that you can yeah you can it's less common but you can i actually think it looks sick because it's like a piece of memorabilia not just right but um no I, my question is do you think there's any scenario in the future where like you get that card right and you actually get lebron to sign it well, what's that card worth does it gain any value usually i mean you look back at like let's say guys in the 80s and 90s who people have gone back and had them sign it and you get a psa dna uh casing for it so that it is certified yeah. usually it goes down in value it's nuts but you have panini slap a sticker on it and it's 4x <laughs> right so it's tough people like even with psa dna some people just still have a tough time with it because yeah. it, it's like yeah all right we all believe panini like obviously they're super reputable it's their business you talk to any player they say they do it there's video of them doing it mm -hmm. um yeah, it's just trust. I think it's all just trust. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting too that like a, like right now, a base Zion rookie in like high condition, uh, like PSA 10, is worth roughly the same as uh, Zion Auto. Yeah, like that doesn't make much sense. Like, if you're a collector, if you're a kid, you would imagine that the autograph is worth 10 times more. Right. On still a rookie card. Right. But the base rookie is worth as much, if not more. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. There's a lot to be discovered, but uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely all, all really fun. Um, so, I guess I'll see you at the National. <laughs> see you at the National with... My Anthony Davis Knicks rookie patch auto. Somehow they'll finagle that card together. Knicks rookie? Yeah, yeah they're going to pull his rookie card from the Pelicans, throw a, a K patch, the blue patch, and get him to sign it. That'll be one of one. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, you know people are calling his 2018-19 uh, Lakers card his Ron. Lakers. Yeah. Yeah, it's epic. Yeah. But Lakers fans are crazy like that. Like that's why I do think the the first year Lakers. I think the first year Lakers are going to be a good card for LeBron, especially if he wins a title in a Lakers jersey, through the roof. But also, I'm very curious. We don't know what's going to happen with this NBA season. They might cut it short. They might cut the regular season, play the playoffs. I think owning this year's card, the coronavirus year, or next year's where their stats are limited is going to be like an interesting collector philosophy. Yeah, it's super interesting. It's also super interesting having a card that is signed by somebody who had it. <laughs> that is interesting. I'm wondering if you got it. No, I mean, that's from years ago, but... Uh... Yeah, I pulled a Gobert live and I was like, get this out of here. <laughs> Right. No, that's funny. Um, anyways, what would you say uh, is your best piece of advice for kids that are just starting to get into it? 
Best piece of advice is learn, learn, learn before you buy. There's no doubt about it. You'll buy something that's not worth it because there are people who are just trying to inflate the price for newcomers into the market. So learn, where can you learn? You're doing informational stuff. I'm doing educational stuff on all our platforms. So just continue to learn and then invest in what you know. It's the same as the stock market. Like if you know, if you like Apple, you know it's got a good product, it has cash flow, et cetera, invest in Apple. Same thing. If you don't watch, Jaron Jackson Jr. enough to actually know if he's a good player. Just because people are saying invest in him, don't invest in him. Do your research if you want to, but invest in the players you watch. You watch R.J. Barrett, you think he's going to be good, get R.J. Barrett. Same thing with Lamar, same thing with, you know, the guys you like. So learn a lot and invest in what you know. 100%. My brother, where can people find you best? Uh, just my username, Jack Settlement, and then Snapback Sports on Snapchat. Check it out. My man, appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you, Buster. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, to another episode of Talking Shop. Make sure to subscribe, like, leave a comment, and also tune in tonight because I'm going on live with Jack Settleman on Instagram. He's going to be breaking a box. We're going to be having some fun talking some more cards. So make sure to head over there and watch us on Instagram tonight. If you're watching this after the day of the upload, It already happened. You missed it. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next episode.